Let's review. The impulse momentum theorem says that a net force applied to an object over a certain time interval will change the momentum of the object. It is a restatement of Newton's second law. And there's the equation F times delta T is equal to M times delta V. Recall that the left side of this equation, F times delta T, is a term we call the impulse, hence the name impulse momentum theorem. A better name might be the impulse change in momentum theorem. Let's try this problem. A 1,320 kilogram car is traveling 40 meters per second. A 68 kilogram passenger applies the brakes for 8.5 seconds to bring the car and himself to rest. Find the average force the seat belt must exert on the person over this time. So let's start with the impulse momentum theorem. We want to find the force that is exerted on the passenger. So let's divide both sides of the equation by delta t to get f by itself. And hopefully we see here that if we're talking about the force that is exerted on the passenger, that the mass of the car is irrelevant. So the m here is simply that of the passenger, 68 kilograms. Delta v is the change in velocity. And change in velocity, as always, is final velocity, which in this case is 0, minus initial velocity, which was 40. Then we divide by the time, and we get a number, negative 320 newtons. And the reason that that force is negative is because we assumed that the initial velocity was positive. And if the initial velocity is positive, let's say the velocity is to the right along the positive x-axis, then in order to slow that person down, clearly we're going to have to apply a force in the direction opposite to that which would be in the negative direction. So that's what that negative sign represents in front of that quantity. Instead of applying the brakes, let's assume that this car smashed into a bridge pier, for example, and came to rest in only 0.12 seconds. Well, everything would be exactly the same as the previous case, except for the time. You can see, as we talked about in an earlier lesson, for a given change in momentum, which is in fact the numerator of this equation right here. For a given change in momentum, if the time is very small, then the force must be very large. For a much larger time, the force can be comparatively smaller.